Hi everybody. I trust you're having a good day. It's Thursday and it is known in the Christian calendar as Monday Thursday and we are going to celebrate communion together today. So if you do not have before you already some bread and some juice, I invite you to go and gather some now. You can just press the pause button and then start me up again when you come back. That's something you can't do in church on Sundays, <laughs> but you can here. So uh, make sure you get some bread and some juice, and we will celebrate communion together. On the Thursday of Holy Week, Scripture tells us that um, the disciples are sent away to prepare the Passover meal. It says in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, reading uh, verse 7 and following it says then came the day of unleavened bread on which the passover lamb had to be sacrificed jesus sent peter and john saying go and make preparations for us to eat the passover where do you want us to prepare for it they asked he replied as you enter the city a man carrying a jar of water will meet you Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks And he said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And then he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. I invite you today to join with me. Let us take the bread and let us eat, remembering Christ broken body for us on the cross of Calvary. In the same way as we've read, Jesus took the cup and he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. It's because of Jesus shed blood on the cross of Calvary that our sins are forgiven. It's because of the shed blood of Jesus that we have the gift of eternal life. And it is because of the shed blood of Jesus that we have hope. Let us drink this cup, remembering his shed blood, to wash away our sins. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the bread and the cup for which we have just participated in. We thank you, God, for sending your Son, Jesus, to die in our place on the cross of Calvary. 
And as we remember tonight, the Last Supper, when Jesus gathered with his disciples in that upper room, before the next day, when he would go to the cross and die for our sakes. Lord, we are overwhelmed with love. We are overwhelmed that you love us so much that you were willing to die for us, Jesus. And we just thank you and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. If we keep reading, we see that um, after they had participated in supper together, Jesus says these words. He says, But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to the man who betrays him. And they began to question among themselves which of them it might be who would do this. Also a dispute arose among them as to which of them was considered to be greatest, and Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as the one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you a kingdom, just as my father conferred on one on me so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. As we continue to read, we see that Jesus, he went out to his usual place in the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. And he withdrew about a stone's throw away beyond them. He knelt down and he prayed. Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me. Not as yet not my will, but yours be done. And an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you do not fall into temptation. While he was still speaking, a crowd came up, and a man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. Judas, or sorry, he approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? And when Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with swords? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus answered, No more of this. And he touched the man's ear, and he healed them, healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple guard, and the elders who had come for him, am I leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts and you did not lay a hand on me, but this is your hour when darkness reigns. I pray that you have been touched by the Spirit of God today as we have participated in communion together, as we have read the scriptures, and we have recounted the events that took place on that Thursday, the last day of Jesus' life on earth before he would be crucified. 
May God bless each and every one of you as we enter tomorrow and look once again at Good Friday. God bless you all. Amen.